All right, guys, welcome back to Just Driven. Today's video is gonna bring you guys up to speed on the Too Fast, Too Furious Skyline. A little bit later on, a friend of ours, Shahar, is bringing his car over, and he has built a replica of the Too Fast, Too Furious Skyline, and he's gonna bring it here. Can't wait to share that car with you, but it's on its way as well. Just got it back from Richard's shop. It used to be B-Side Fabrication, so it's now called Works Corsa. He's an incredible welder, and he had the task of installing the roll cage. Now, I shouldn't really refer to it as a roll cage. It is a movie roll bar, but we went the extra step and actually used real one and three quarter inch roll cage material as opposed to two inch muffler piping that was used in the movie car. Yes, could you believe it? They actually took exhaust piping, two inch exhaust piping, and that was what they used for the roll cage in the cars that you saw in Too Fast, Too Furious. So a couple weeks back, I had the opportunity to go to Universal and check out the second principal unit car. And it was really a great opportunity to kind of look at everything and to measure the NOS bottles, as well as the A-pillar gauges and all of the gauges and monitors and all the stuff that you saw in that car. I actually drug Richard along with me and he was able to take really good accurate measurements. So the cage that you see in this car is very, very close to what was seen in the actual movie car. There was a really goofy plate. They just literally laid a plate on top of this package tray and welded the, the tubing onto it. We tucked our plate under the tubing and no, we didn't structurally reinforce this tubing to the underside of the car. It's kind of pointless. It looks better than it did in the actual movie car. So it was just a great opportunity to check it out. We're still gonna pull this cage out. We're gonna send it out. We're gonna have it powder coated. More to come on that. Now that we've got the car back, we're going to organize prepping it for all of the extensive work that's to come. And that's gonna be fun. And we really went the extra mile. As some of you may know, GTTs never had an MFD. They always had this three pod uh, cluster of gauges. Uh, we did actually acquire a correct GTR MFD. We also acquired the correct gauge cluster for a GTR. The little things that we're going to do to this is gonna be pretty exciting. If you recall in the movie, you saw a rather large monitor in place of where the passenger side airbag is. In Craig's original car, which was the principal one car, it was a relatively good looking setup, but I don't know that his was retractable. I haven't asked him, but you lose some of the visual out of the windshield when that monitor is on and up. And so what we've decided to do is install a pop-up headlight assembly inside there with the monitor attached to it. Flick of a button, it'll pop up without issue. And we're gonna retain the original airbag cover as the headlight door, retract up and retract down. So that'll be kind of a cool little feature. Originally, we talked about not using the three NOS bottles. Uh, on the passenger side. We've since decided we are going to do both seats, having them reupholstered properly in the correct material, but we are gonna also make the platform and we're going to make it removable so that when we go to car events, it will have the three NOS bottles there. It will in fact have the purge valves along with the pipes coming out. The Torino Sparco seats, which were correct for the Too Fast, Too Furious Skyline. We got some amazingly clean seats. I mean, they're look at them, they're like brand new. 
new. Uh, all we have to do is have them refinished to the, the original colors being silver and blue. It's a shame we're gonna, we're gonna ruin this beautiful upholstery that's on here now and the condition they're in. So these were not easy to find, believe it or not. We, we searched the world and we ended up finding them. We got them some time ago. Not an easy seat to locate. They're gonna look brand new when they're redone. We had Richard prepare the seats and the seat tracks for them as well. He pre-installed those seats in the car so that we had great clearance for the roll cage. Of course, these have to be completely remodeled of the material that was seen in the car, the movie car. A little bit later on, a friend of ours, Shahar, is bringing his car over, and he has built a replica of the Too Fast, Too Furious Skyline, and he's gonna bring it here. The upholstery guy that he used is the same people that we're gonna use. Can't wait to share that car with you, but it's on its way as well. There's a few other things that we've done to this car. We had to address the strut towers on our car. 1998. Nissan Skyline GTT and GTRs, a lot of these cars have rust issues. As you could imagine, they, they live on an island. The strut towers are known for going bad. So obviously if it's lived inside and it's been well cared for, there are cars floating around out there that have no rust, no rust issues whatsoever. But unfortunately, GTTs oftentimes would live in the driveway and in Japan, they salt the roads. And so all of that material that gets kicked up on the bottom of these floors, I've seen so many of these cars that are just really bad shape. A little bit of surface rust, okay. But one of the biggest flaws these cars have is these strut towers. This, man, GTT hoods, you could definitely work out with that. Big difference, GTR hood aluminum, GTT hood steel. So this, was a typical scenario where we had strut towers that were in pretty rough shape. There is a company that actually makes the re-stamped steel. What we elected to do was have Richard remake a plate that was going to really stiffen up the front end of this car. And we are going to replace the uh, strut tower brace with a much sturdier and a better looking strut tower brace. He went ahead and cut out all of the rust issue and just made these super strong plates, which is gonna add even a little bit more structural integrity to this, this engine bay. For you guys who don't know Shahar, he actually starred, well, starred, he was one of the guys in Fast 10. Tell us how that happened. I'm a friend of uh, Sung. Sung, yeah, yeah. It's just an insanely humble and amazing guy. I, I've heard you amazing know, things about him. There's, yeah. I haven't met one person in this world that would say something off about him. Yeah, and yeah. this is what it is. He goes to charities, he do a lot of stuff for, for children. He'll stop and take a selfie with everybody. He'll engage a conversation, right. he'll respect everybody. Insane, and he loves cars. I, I wanna say he's maybe one of the few ones that really into cars sure. from the franchise. Yeah. And he invited me to be with him just to hang out on set. And one of the days they started shooting the, the Brazil scene and they needed like 300 extras. Holy and crap. he's like, Shahar, go get ready. You're, you're gonna be an extra. Where from, was that filmed? What, uh, London. Wow. They filmed it in a studio in London. And I was like, no way. And he's like, yeah, yeah, go. Yeah, so I- Did I, they give you clothes to wear They gave stuff? me clothes, they gave me everything. It's in one of my posts. So they, they dressed me up, they gave me everything. And then suddenly, oh, we're looking for 10 guys to be uh, Toretto's goons. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Sure. That's, that's so, awesome. Suddenly the ten of us has yeah. guns and like we have his back. That's cool. And he was just an extra, you know. It's kind of fun. It's by, funny. But for me, it's like for, for such a huge fan and, and yeah. doing this yeah. and like I've never expected something like that to happen. Yeah, yeah. For me to suddenly be in a movie and, and like that's clear cool. screen time. <laughs> like, that's, that's was it, it was pretty overwhelming, huh? It was. Yeah. That's fascinating. It for sure was. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. Did you meet Dennis there or? Uh, I didn't meet Dennis. I met um, one of his main guys. Yeah, because uh, I know Dennis doesn't always fly to, uh, yeah. you know, out of country. I mean, he does. I don't does, think I but... ever truly uh, was introduced to Dennis. Oh, I've wow. seen okay. I've seen Dennis uh, at uh, Sean's right. uh, parties and stuff. Um, but right. And said hi. Aut Autotopia, yeah. LA. And said yeah. hi, but never truly. Hey, what's up? You got it. And okay. funny enough, when uh, when I did the first eclipse and we shot it with Sean at Autotopia, he shot it at Dennis' warehouse. Oh, is that right? Dennis wasn't there, but we shot yeah, the car yeah. at his warehouse. Isn't that an insane facility? Yeah. Insane. Yeah. Insane. So that's a cool story. Yeah, you gotta insane. love it. Insane. I've, I've never expected, it's like, if you build it, they would come. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I've never. So, so, how, just... so how many cars, so you had the eclipse, 
That was your first movie My first one was replica. The Eclipse, the green one. I got it wrong, everything. You know, the yeah. graphics, the body kit, the wheels, I got everything wrong. Everything well, you gotta, wrong. you gotta get your feet wet somewhere. Yeah. yeah, and I started to get some help from some friends and I started getting the correct wheels, correct body kit, correct yeah. graphics, and I started changing everything. Even though it's such a rare car, you, you go to a car show, you'll never see one. Yeah. I knew the community now. Sure. So now I know that in Southern California, there's like six of them. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, now I wanna do something that nobody else has. So I, I shifted to the to the second movie Eclipse, the purple one. Oh right! So oh, we, the convertible. Yeah. Oh, nice. So I did the purple spider. Interesting. And then we we just started going on and on and on. Was that an automatic car? No, it was manual, a stick manual shift, car. V, V6 GTS. So car. It, it's funny. A lot of people don't know this, but you know the different manufacturers in Mitsubishi, especially Mitsubishi, in those years, they had all these pre-production Eclipses and some were spiders and some were the, the, the little coops. Right. So when they're manufactured, they're manufactured as pre-production cars and they get all their testing, they do all their marketing with these cars, but they're not technically able to sell them because they're void of any warranty. Okay. Although they have all the labels and they have all the emission requirements, what they lack is the correct date code to match the VIN, so they really can't be titled because they were manufactured years before the year they, they call out. them. Yeah. So the manufacturers literally call them crusher cars, or they sell they just them. Crush it or sell it for a dollar for, for a parts. dollar, and the cars can never be registered or put on public roadway. You know, okay. so they're great for race I'll teams. I'll take an R thirty four for a dollar. I know, right? Yeah, give I me know. five. <laughs> it's funny because I remember way back in the day when Steve Mitchell was the Nissan guy when Nissan was here in California, in Southern California, at Gardena, their okay. headquarters facility. I mean, this is literally in the early two thousands. You know, they were wrapping up production on the R thirty four about that time and yeah. they sent a couple right hand drive one r34 gtr red v okay. spec and a yellow gtt okay i'm really not sure why the they did it they were right hand drive cars yeah I'm sure and that's uh, the... both of those had to be crushed at the time we ended up getting our hands on a handful of the 350z's for a dollar and that blue one that you showed me in that amazing book it's awesome what shahar did for us but we helped shahar out with this wing actually we're in a situation where uh, our car was in the process. We had so many other projects going on and our move going on and Shahar wanted to get his car to the SEMA show. And the one thing you were missing was this wing and we had it sitting on a shelf. We've since ordered another one and have it, but we went ahead and, and sold him this wing. And I was I'm able so... to go to SEMA with a complete car. Yeah, I, was... I love the fact that it made it on it this car. It bugged me so much and I was like, oh, how would I get the wing? Should I just get a generic wing and just drill it in? And it's like all kind of thoughts. It, it makes the car. Went into yeah. my mind, I was like, I'm gonna do the graphics. At one point, I thought about taking it to SEMA without the graphics and just call it the prelude car. So my prelude was I drove that look from Canada to LA. GTRs are through the roof. As right, I mean, yeah. GTR R34. It doesn't matter the, the community, they only see a GTR. It's yeah. funny, even though it's SEMA for the, the fun of it, I put a, a windshield banner that right. says, No, it's a GTT. Oh, and I, 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 see, some, I remember and, seeing that. And I would yeah. see pictures online of the car and saying, Brian's GTR. And yeah. it's like the front of the car with the no, details. it's a GTT. It's like, it's a, and I see people fighting in the comments, No, it's a GTR. Yeah. It's like, I, I can't be more clear about it. I know, I know. Well, I love the fact that you put a GTT logo. I put a GTT logo. Bag. You had that made, right? Uh, I got it on eBay. Oh, no they way. had it, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. We're going to put a GTR one on ours. Okay. Actually, you know what? I don't even think the movie car had one. I don't think they had it. A subject that comes up all the time. Being in the movie car business and renting cars to the studios and being on set in so many different movies over the years, people really have no idea the condition of what a movie car really is. You know, Craig Lieberman is a perfect example. He was in the industry, really tied to the tuner community, had an enormous amount of knowledge on all the aftermarket accessories and parts that are available for this, this culture, right? And the studio approached him as you guys could check out Craig Lieberman's uh, videos and he goes into depth about his experiences. Yeah, What's amazing <laughs> is they won't use those cars as principal hero cars. I mean, they're, they're gonna call them principal hero cars and they'll be on set and they'll be seen just for the actor to get in and out of, but they don't wanna risk 
any of the liability of the cars being driven hard and potentially damaged. So they make multiple versions of every car. You know, when you're behind scenes and you see this stuff and you might see, you know, if you go back and, and now with YouTube, you can go back and, and replay every scene and you see different cars, different emblems. The graphics might be a little different. And it's because to make one scene requires multiple shoots over multiple days. And there's just not a huge appreciation for that. I've spent some time at Dennis. I've spent yeah. some time at Universal Lots and I've seen many, many actual screen movie cars and majority of them looks like a very bad replica. Yeah, true. I had a bunch of cars on set for the Joker movie recently. Being a, a cop car guy, I had a bunch of mid 70 Monaco's and Cornettes. And when they filmed Joker, they used those cars, those vintage cars to replicate the police cars right, of right, Gotham. Right. All the cars went out on set and they were on set for a while and I got them back and, and a couple of the cars only had the Gotham sticker on one side. You know, but they shoot the scene on that side. Yeah, they they're like, why, else. why do that side? It's in Fast, they had the, the, in Too Fast, they had the BMWs, they, they were too lazy to replicate the actual seat. They just painted the top of the seat. <laughs> so funny. They just painted the top of the yeah. seat silver. So if you see the shot, you only see the top of the seat. That's it. It's, it's so cool, guys. And they call it movie car magic. But I get them. They have, yeah, to, they have get, to do it. They have to get shit done. Yeah. In order to make the shot. You know, with, that's it. with what they're paying the actors and all of the staff. They don't have a budget to do seven hero cars. No, absolutely. There's, absolutely and there's not. no need for it. We were just talking off camera about how expensive these cars have gotten. Yeah. And currently, right now, to get a really clean, a, a, a rating of four, even a 3.5 rating and above with relatively low kilometers, under 80,000 kilometers, landed here, you're, you're spending $160,000. Yeah, I have two of them. I bought both of them in 2020, where right. I bought two for less than one GTR cost. And back then, a GTR costed like 60,000. Yeah. Okay, but for me, as far as like, I know I'm, I know I have my own collection. I know I have multiple cars. I love the RT84. I'm not a, I'm not a true. I would say it out loud. I'm not a true GTR purist that I, I gotta have everything. And if I was, this prob, this car would probably was. I would never made it because a true purist would never depreciate the GTR and paint exactly it a non-GTR right. color, trash the bumpers, trash the side skirts, trash the wing, trash the uh, seats, trash the steering wheel, trash everything, paint True. it a non-GTR color yep. to make it look like something it's not because it's 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 like a vintage Lambo or yeah. it's, a, it's a GTR. You want to keep it as stock as possible. And, and that's plus what we, we... Little touches like, you we know... We think alike. Yep. Nis, uh, the, the Nismo uh, uh, LMGT4s or like yep. all kind of Nismo stuff or Zetune, whatever, yep. to make the stuff that GTR owners like. Right. So right. for me, it didn't make sense to start with such a high base and then start putting all the... And then cutting the holes in dashes, yeah. Yeah. putting ridiculous looking gauges in it by today's standard. Back then it was yeah. a little different. Yeah. So, you know, that's the whole, the I'm so glad you said that because that's exactly how I was thinking. When we decided we were going to do a Too Fast, Too Furious Skyline, I wasn't about to destroy a beautiful R34 GTR. And, and again, and people that understand what I just yeah. said right. would appreciate that I did this to, to a, a GTT, GTT and yeah. not a GTR. Yeah. Today, it's a purist car. I've, yeah. I've at this point, since I've owned it for like four years now, and I've known so many people that owns a, a 34s, 33s, 32s, GTRs, GTTs, right. I've either than maybe two people, my friends uh, Jesse and Jay, I've never seen anybody else taking his GTR on the track. Yeah, and true. I've, I've never seen it. It's not often. It's, it's a purist car and they, they they polish it all day long. They yeah. don't go out with it. This car has some rock chips, has some yeah. scars on it. I already have like- Well, you do that. You drive all your cars. On it. I drive them all Thir the Your 33 GTR. You have a real 33 GTR. Do you still have that car? Yeah. Yellow Bird? The Big Bird. Big Bird, sorry. Yellow, yellow Bird. Yellow, yellow Bird yeah. is the, uh, the yellow that's bird. the color. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you got Big Bird and he's got it. He's got it. And that's a real GTR. Right, yeah. right. I got a good deal on it. I, I wanted to do my own personal touch on it. So it's not, um, it's more of a tribute than a replica. It has it. it has like carbon vented fenders, carbon vented hood, right. rail side side skirts. But for the most of it, it has like a stock body, the the movie wheels. It looks really it looks pretty. Good. I mean, 
that car wasn't seen a lot in the movie. Right. So when you see the graphics on it, you immediately go to that you place. Know. Yeah. You know what it is. You know what it is. Yeah. What it is. So you have that. The, you still have the green eclipse? I have the green eclipse. This is my second take on it. Uh, okay. Uh, I sold my first green eclipse uh, to do the pinkest 2000. So, um, so how many cars do you have that are uh, replicas slash tributes? How many do you have currently? Uh, probably around eight cars. Eight. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. So one of them being the Eclipse Convertible. Uh, the Eclipse Convertible I sold to a good friend of mine, Got my it. buddy John from Miami. So he owns this car. Okay. And then he owns the the white Jetta that uh, oh, is I that helped right? him build as well. And it's sitting uh, in my collection as well. That's his car. Got it. Um, and he's such a, an insanely great friend. And we're just enjoying building cars together. It's yeah, like cool. my first, my, my perfect partner. Yeah. I did the Suki car, like I said, from uh, from Too Fast, the, the S2000. I did the RX-7, the red Toretto's RX-7, okay. the FD. That was really, really cool. I you have, still have that? I have it, yeah. Okay. Lightning replica that I've done as well. I have the the Civic, the white Civic from the first movie. The, oh, really? The Denny Amoto, the yeah, one that plays yeah. in the it has PlayStation. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it has, the, what color graphics are on that? Silver, uh, blue, uh, yeah, gray, something yeah, yeah. like that. Oh, no so way. So I have that one and I have the second 34 that I just got the body kit for it and I'm waiting for the wheels to get back from For the fourth coding. movie. And I'm, I'm gonna wrap Bayside it. Bayside blue. Oh, you're gonna one, wrap it? That one I'm gonna wrap, okay. yeah. I'm okay. gonna wrap it blue. Yeah, yeah. So I got the Bayside Blue um, wrap material. That's gonna be nice as well. So Do you still have the Vipers? Of course. The one of them. What? One, one of them I sold. Got it. Because um, again, it was the exact same car. Yeah. And my wife didn't want to drive the other one. Well, yeah, I can see. I mean, come on, a first gen Viper daily. <laughs> and, yeah. and one I still have it since day that's one. That's cool. Day well, one. dude, that's pretty dedicated. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty cool. Yeah. This is a fun fun little car to get sideways it is it doesn't push in the turns like the r34s do don't get me wrong i know there's going to be a lot of people out there saying oh my god i can't believe you'd take a gtt over a we're GTR. not saying that gtt yeah. is better than a gtr it's yeah we're not period. saying that period a gtt a gtr is better than a gtt right. it's the the most the more superior car there's no question about it but don't and we're i don't think we're building a gtt to clone a gtr we're building a gtt to clone a the movie, movie car, car. Um, that's my my take on it it's a it's a first Fairly inexpensive build, and I just want to make Are it. Are you nice gonna do the stop tech brakes? I'm, I'm after you know. Again, every project car is is a project car. It's yeah. it's a work in progress. It's a it's a project that never ends, right? Right. The the project True. never ends. So, yeah. uh, for SEMA, I was focusing on the uh, exterior of the car. I went to SEMA with no interior, like stock, completely stock interior. Oh, you didn't have these seats in it at SEMA? No. Oh no way. I, I had the stock steering wheel, stock seats, stock everything. God, your so guy after did. SEMA, I had some more time. I did the, the fading of the graphics. I did the nitrous uh, sprayer. Yeah, so a lot of guys don't <laughs> recognize that the actual movie cars, they faded these graphics in <clears throat> silver. The whole front of the car. Alex from MST uh, Upholstery did the whole interior, the seats, the back seat, the door panels, the back panels, everything. Did he do the Sparco Yes, he did the logos? Sparco lettering. He did everything. God, he did such and an amazing And then I gave job. him the seat belts. So I, I did the exact same thing. I found yeah. like a few seat belts in like red color or blue color or whatever. And I just gave him the seat belts. I bought a brand new set from Sparco and I just swapped the patches. Really? So I have like a brand new safe uh, piece. And they, I bought the quick disconnect. One. I saw that. Yeah, that's cool. So if you want to have people that's sitting bitching. in the back, no problem at all. So you're not going to do the roll bar? I don't know if I'll do the roll bar only because I really love having my wife and daughter with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to car shows and stuff. So that's why I did the second seat. That's why I didn't do the roll bar. I have the baby seat in the back. It's, <laughs> she loves it. That's, that's awesome. This is a hobby of mine. Right. I, I do construction. I do kitchen remodels right. for a living and, and home uh, remodeling and stuff like that. And I get to this on the weekends. And I try to spread myself over those cars and the family and everything. It's so tough, man. Yeah, yeah. maybe I get like five hours, like pure hours to work on the car over yeah. a weekend. Yeah, yeah. The car looks really good. People really like it. It looks really good. I love good. seeing people reaction I, to it. I, I love, love it. Sharing I, it with people in the clothes. Yeah, it's, man. It's really nicely done. I, I don't think anybody else did it in the in the US yet. I've seen some people put the graphics on a stock GTT. I don't think anybody else did yeah, it Yeah, I see yet. a few Not of that these. it matters for me if I'm the first yeah. or last. I, I, I encourage everybody to 
to do as many projects as possible and chase their dreams and enjoy those cars. Absolutely. You know? And Absolutely. whoever wants help with whatever, I'm, I'm sharing the, the information. So you guys, how do they reach you? How do they get hold of you? So my, my Instagram is, is The that, Vipers Guy. Okay. Uh, my YouTube channel is The Vipers Guy as well. My full name is Shahar Shan Algazi. Instagram and uh, you guys YouTube, reach TikTok, reach out whatever. to reach out to Shahar and and, and, and all those videos you know we did a, a video with the throttle team we have all the specs on the right. car it's like we're we're trying to nice. share the and that's what I love about you you know so many guys are really they keep it under their they keep it under their arms they don't share really all the information and the details we we try to share everything with our subscribers and our followers and I love that about you because not very many people do that. It looks Obviously, great, it's man. not a it's not a cheap build, but it's it's a pretty straightforward build. You know, if you're converting a, a, a GTT to a GTR, you know all the body panels that needs to be swapped right. anyway. Right. And then everything on the exterior is Sea West, so Sea West front bumper, side skirts, rear bumper, wing. Yeah. Everything is Sea West, so it's pretty straightforward. The wheels are HRE 446s. Those are insanely hard to find, but there's a company called Fast and Furious Parts up right. in Canada, Martin. We're, we're working with him, and he's provided us with the set of these wheels as well, and they're really amazing. So he really makes those wheels now, yeah. so you can reach out to him. He this, also makes the Racing Heart wheels yeah. too, so yeah. those are available now. And then this carbon fiber wing that cost more than, than know, the car. Isn't that, isn't that ridiculous? Did you wrap it or paint? I wrapped it, yeah. yeah there you go, I smart. It. So I wrapped um, it, but it's carbon fiber. I kept these unwrapped so you can see that it's carbon. Yeah, I love and that. And obviously the bracket is all carbon. I know, that's so well done. Paint, it's a house of color paint. PVC Where'd you get, where'd you get your graphics from? Uh, we reached out to Mara Image. The, we love Mara Image, Enrico over there, and the guys. Those Jonathan, guys are awesome. They, they're yeah. awesome. They, had, they didn't have a rushed uh, right. appointment for us. Right. Uh, and obviously they wouldn't give me the file to print it to somewhere else. Proform in uh, Canada created another set of uh, nice. decals for us and we printed it and put it on the car and Got it. to SEMA we went. We built this, this car in five days. Yeah, you guys, the story this is, this on how this car was built. About. Yeah, it, this, this car literally was built in five days. On the clock. He, the car was, yeah. the, the paint was one hour old and we went into the spray booth, fired up the car and straight drove it to LA from Canada. It's crazy, all to make SEMA. So how many hours of sleep did you get in those five days? Uh, probably five hours. Yeah, isn't that crazy? <laughs> An hour a day. That's dedication, When guys. I passed out and then me and Martin drove back, it's like each one of us would pass out on the passenger seat and the yeah. other one would drive for like an hour and then two hours and then three hours. That's crazy. Until we got back. What's Somehow. so amazing is you were able to reach out to the company that made and did all the upholstery for the original cars, and they supplied you with all this material? They gave us a, a sample. And, which I uh, to bring you. Which is amazing. Yeah, I'd love to have that. Yeah. Seriously, Shahar, it looks amazing. Thank you so it much. It looks absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. I know that they sell an aluminum filler that will bolt into that cluster and make it look like a GTR cluster. Okay. And it's readily available. Okay. And I may have another GTR cluster I can give you. Oh, wow. Because they're be relatively easy to, not easy, but they can be wired into a GTT cluster. They'll be sick. To give it that look. They'll be sick. But yeah, car looks fantastic. I'll bring the car. We'll get some beers, we'll pull some. Yeah, man. Well, hey, I'm gonna hook you up on your gauges and Thank stuff like so that. Much. That'll really look, that'll look fantastic. It. I really do, um, and I really look up to the projects you guys do. Again, oh, thank you. I'm thank not you, thank by you. any means, you know, a shop or no, dude, I'm you're, trying you, to do it. You're a really special enthusiast, and yeah. the fact that you, uh, this is a dedication, and people have no idea how much work it takes to research and find all of these parts. It's kind of like having that special recipe yeah. of you know your grandmother's cooking and yeah. only, only she has it and she won't reveal it. Yeah. And very few people reveal all this data. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I have a huge People don't realize, you know, just in wheels, I have so much money and stress and time in wheels. Yeah. You know, I find, I find wheels and then to rebarrel them, to respec them, yeah. to do everything, to powder coat them, to get a lot the of work. to get the new hardware. Just just wheels is like insane. Yeah. Trust me, I know. Yeah. We chase parts all the time. Yeah. We still have There's, the amps yeah. that uh, Craig, you know, turned us on to. It took four or five months to find the correct amps. I don't know that we're gonna ever put them in the car because we're gonna drive this car pretty spiritedly and I don't know that I want all that weight in the back. But yeah. we all can relate to what's involved in sourcing all these parts yeah you know and all those chasing those little details you know the nitrous sprayer the, the know, hooking dude. up stuff I hooking know. the inner cooler trying to do something that it's like you said the movie production they had to to put a car together in a week or two 
in order to make a certain shot. And it's nowhere uh, close to what they did on the movies because they did it, they did less. Yeah, for sure. They just put it together in order to make it. The, the amount of work we put into this build and the detail that went into this build, uh, the, I stress out every time this car goes somewhere. Yeah. You know, yeah. I can't imagine what it would be like with a thousand people scurrying around a set. Yeah, yeah. And have yeah. that car exposed to that element. I'm trying to to not be that guy that's like it's a it's a trailer queen and right. we're not driving it. So the car has rock chips, the car has some cracks on the front bumper. I took it to a bunch of car shows, some models leaned on the car and kinda yeah. almost cracked my fiberglass quarter panels. It's it happens, it you happens. know, it's you use it. it you happens. use the car. Yeah. Uh, but it's there to enjoy it and I take it on the track, I take it everywhere, it's... I love it, man. Do you have a limited slip differential? Um, we uh, we locked it. I was gonna say, because when you were pulling in here, I heard chirping. We locked it, yeah. You locked it, yeah. you welded it together? We like to party. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. Well, thanks for coming by, dude. Thank you for having yeah. me, man. I, I always, always appreciate you coming by. You guys, don't forget to follow Shahar, and Thank stay you. tuned. Our Skyline is coming back from Richard's in probably the next week, week and a half, because he needs to make room at his shop. Let's stay in touch and let's seriously have a, uh, a get together here when, when our sure. car is done yeah. and, and we'll have some fun. Yeah. We, we need to do a track day. Let's do it. We should do a track day. Let's do it. In our next video, you're gonna see a lot of stuff happen. You're gonna see the hood come off, the bumpers, both front and back, the headlight assemblies, taillight bezels, the fenders. I'm gonna have a glass guy come out because every time I've ever tried to remove glass, it's never fared well for the glass. We did actually buy new quarter windows for this car. So the quarter windows actually come with the new rubber surround. We were fortunate enough to find those, but we are gonna remove the rear window. Once that's done, our plan is to remove the quarter panels. We're gonna pull the trunk, wings coming off. A lot of stuff's gonna come apart on this car. Are we gonna hook up the NOS? I don't know, you know? I don't know, maybe. I mean, we're gonna have three NOS bottles in there. That's gonna be Alex's baby. My baby is the body and the interior. His baby is the drive frame. So uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll cross that road when we get to it. So looking forward to this build and can't wait to share it all with you guys. So stay tuned. In the next video, you're gonna see all of that stuff happen and then it'll be prepped. We're gonna do final alignment and then off to the paint and body shop. Hey guys, welcome back to Just Driven. Hey guys, welcome back to Just Driven. Hey guys, welcome back to Just Driven. In today's video, we're gonna bring you up to speed on the Too Fast, Too Furious Skyline. Lacey, you stay right there. Ah, no barking. The uh, NOS, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. And uh, sorry for doing that in your ear. I'm gonna start again. Well, one's gotta be used to just blow up skirts, right? That's all we're gonna do. We're gonna look for skirts. We should probably try to find women we wearing those skirts. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, you don't want to see that. Uh, so yeah, the, the plan is, is to actually, I don't know, maybe we will make them functional. Look at this doggy. I, I can't believe she's not growling at you. She always growls whenever I take a camera out. Hey, you just got bathed. You can't be sitting on a dirty floor, girl dog. This is Lacey. This is my pity boxer mix. How many do you bring to work every day? I bring 10 of these guys, 10 dogs. Alex and I run a rescue, a dog rescue, and we, we take seniors that are gonna be euthanized. You know, in Southern California, this state euthanizes an enormous amount of dogs. Unfortunately, there are so many freaking beautiful, beautiful pets that are being euthanized at an alarmingly high rate. We save as many as we can. We started a little rescue called the Underdogs of Love, and she's one of, she came out of Baldwin Park, a high kill shelter. I've had her living with the pack now for about Six years? Yeah, I'll continue to do that. Alex and I are dedicated to saving as many dogs' lives as we can, and they get to come hang out with us. The reason why she's out here in the warehouse is it's dog grooming day today, and she is barking at the groomer every time he comes in to grab another dog, and she's just, we couldn't get anything filmed out here because she's just going crazy at the groomer. So she got to, she got to come out here and be with us. Go pretty dog. All right, guys, more to follow. Come on, come on, go in the car, get the car. Wanna go for a ride? What are you doing, girl dog? She's like, I don't get it. The steering wheel's on the wrong side. I moved here from Israel like six years ago. The day we landed, my buddy hosted us in his house. He gave us an RV to stay because we didn't know where we at, like where we're gonna go. We didn't have a place to stay. So he gave us an RV. He hooked it up to utilities. 
and we had a little breakfast after the 17 hour flight and I was like, hey Rod, can you take me somewhere to buy a car? And my wife was like, today, you're gonna buy it today. Oh, the day you arrived. The day we landed. So I was like, we need a car to get by. <laughs> so we went, we drove, I don't know, I don't even remember where. We drove for like two hours, we, we got a hold. Um, of the Viper. I actually already contacted somebody from Craigslist uh, regarding the Viper and it was my first, it was my dream car for as long as I can remember myself. A Gen, Gen 1? A Gen 1 RT10 red. Yeah. Super beautiful car. It's my first time ever seeing one. My first really? time ever driving one. There was none in Israel? You could none in Israel. And I visited the US like twice a year. I've never seen a first gen. I've seen the fifth gen, the third gen. You don't I've see never, them now. The, I think they yeah. make like, they made like 200 units a year or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it was my first time and the guy was like, you wanna go out for a test drive? You wanna, you, you wanna check it out? I'm like, sure, you know? And I'm like, poker face, like I'm, I'm, I'm dying from the inside. I'm like, I know yeah. I'm buying it, no matter what he's gonna ask. It's so, pretty clean car. Yeah, insanely yeah. clean car. So I bought that car, we brought it back home. The funny thing is, a month later, I was so hyped that I moved from Israel to the US and everything is on the table, everything is possible. Like all my dreams can come true. It's just a matter of money. So. I, I, sit, I sit on my computer one day on Facebook Marketplace and suddenly another Viper pops out and I'm totally blind. I'm like a drug addict. I'm like, there's another Viper for sale. What are the odds? I got to buy it too. No So way. I was like, babe, do you want a Viper? And she's like, what? I'll get one for you. <laughs> <laughs> really? And another she's like, Gen 1. And she's like, what? And I'm like, don't worry about it. So I bought it. Uh, it was in Monterey. And somebody, it was in a Porsche dealership. So somebody traded it for a new Porsche or something out of his collection. Wow. It was like a, a one owner, 7,000 miles, brand new car. I flew up there with a, with a cashier's check and some cash. I grabbed the car and I drove straight down. No way. And then I'm, I'm driving down PCH with the car and I'm, I'm pulling in and I'm, I'm coming back to the RV where we have the RV, we have like a little canopy and the Viper is next to it and then as I'm backing up the second Viper, that looks exactly, it's both of them were 94s, both of them were RT10s, no, both of them were reds, exactly the same car. That's awesome. And I'm like, did I just buy the exact same car? No way. That's so, classic. We, we lived in Mount Olympus in that RV and I was, I was walking the dog through the neighborhood and I'm the new kid on the block and people are like, who are you? You live here? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, live, uh, I live with Rod. I'm, I'm the guy with the Vipers. And they're like, yeah, you're, oh yeah, you're the Vipers guy, the guy with the Vipers. I'm oh. like, yeah, you know what? Sure. So that's, and that just stuck. And then in Israel, I never had an Instagram. We, we mainly used, uh, back then we, we mainly used Facebook. So I opened my Instagram. I was like, okay. The Vipers guy, that's what the neighbors call me What year anyway. was this? What year was this? 2018. Oh, wow, dude. 2018, May of 2018. So you found two Gen 1s in 2018. Yeah, two Gen 1s. And those were 94s. 94s, first generation. And, and wow, super low miles. Yeah. So my first yeah. picture on my, my Instagram is the day I backed up the second Viper in, and I was looking at it, and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this. And I was like, you know, that would be a cool picture. So I took a selfie and I'm like, I'm doing this and the two Vipers and the RV in the background. That was my first picture. So cool. On my Instagram. Uh, so I was like, okay, the Vipers guy, I guess that's who I am now. Even before I started with the... That's and fantastic. Then I started daily in the Viper for like a few months and I was like, it was so precious to me. I wanted to do something else. I wanted to build a car and I wanted to have something that nobody else has and something that I couldn't do in Israel. So I started building the, the Fast and Furious Eclipse. So uh, that was, that was, that that's was what first I was going to ask you. What, what drew you to that? Did you see the movies back in the day in, oh, yeah. in Israel? Oh, Were yeah. they popular? Were they? Oh, yeah. And I'm curious. For me, it was like a spaceship because in Israel, you're not allowed to modify a car at all. You're not even allowed. You're allowed to change the color of the car, but then it, it has to be on a title and you have to get it to a lab and they have to make sure. Really? It's insane. So no engine modifications No, nothing. No, nothing. Obviously, people do it. Obviously, people have insanely cool cars and we have a racing division and there's like yeah. race cars um, and people do like extremely nice clean build where they hide the turbos, they hide everything and Got it. They, they they do what they want they yeah. need to do. Yeah. But for the most part, you're not allowed to. Really? 
uh, especially to to have like a car like the Eclipse where it's like all out there, you know, like a neon green and the graphics, yeah. the big wing and everything. It's like the first cop that's going to see you, it's going to sure, get hassled. Get out of here. So th there's even not here even... in, the, in, oh, in California, for sure. oh, for sure. uh, a cop see me on that, uh, sure, pulled over. Let's just yeah. see who you are. <laughs> yeah. No, that's pull true. pull over and then let's, let's but, talk. But in Israel, though, you can't even have, there's not like aftermarket wheel manufacturers and things like that. There is, but there there's is. Just... So if the car uh, came from factory with 19 inch, it's you're you're okay to replace it to the exact same 19 inch. Oh, technically, just a different style. Correct. Okay. Correct. So you can wow. Yeah. So a lot of restrictions. A lot of restrictions. So what? So what so drew now you? No, I come. I got here. I'm free. What drew you to the states? I mean, what was it? The car culture, the car, or was it the car culture? Yeah. The 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 culture in general. You know. Yeah. 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 I was, you know, I'm I'm a nerdy American anyway, you know, for as long yeah. as I can remember myself. Yeah, yeah. So it's like it. Did it you fit. Did, did you speak any English when you came here, or did you? I it? Uh, some, yeah, some. Because I mean, yeah, yeah I, I picked up a lot through working with absolutely. People. The Neo Motors are already built in with B Cam, so um, variable valve timing is is awesome, especially when you get some nice turbos. And we have some. Uh, I see a middle finger and a face. <laughs> what? <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> so uh, these guys, these clowns, are following me back. That FJ is so sick. Hey, I want to hear the. I want to hear the the supercharger. Oh yeah. Sounds good. Huh? Yeah. It sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shot back. All right. That FJ is so much fun. Love that. Love that truck.